How you doing? Ezra Neeson here, coming to you from the great state of Maine. Maine's not part of the South. In fact, we're so far north, we're the last thing you'll see before Canada. But like most men from rural parts of the U.S., I grew up watching the Dukes of Hazzard. As we all know, Bo and Luke Duke's cat was called the General Lee, and it had the Confederate battle flag painted on its roof. So that's what I think of whenever I see the Confederate flag. Some of my ancestors fought on both sides of the war. The Civil War was the only time the United States has split into two different countries, and the only time armies of Americans have gone to war against each other. More Americans died in the Civil War than in all other wars combined. And that's not counting all the people who died by slavery who spent their whole lives being treated like fam animals. There's no way to erase all that from our history. The choice we have is what we want to admire about our ancestors, and what we don't want to admire about them. I've been to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I've walked the length of Pickett's Charge. Is there anything in your life that you care enough about to run a mile across an open field toward people shooting rifles and cannons at you? On July 3, 1863, 12,000 Confederate men made that choice. They made it to within 30 feet of the Union line. When the Union cannons opened up in their faces with grape shot, the dead fell two and three deep on the ground. 12,000 men charged across that field, and 6,000 of them were killed or wounded there in less than an hour. In the South today, there are two groups of people trying to live next to each other, many of whom are trying to get along with each other, even though their ancestors were enemies for centuries. That is a really big puzzle to work through. But just because people's ancestors were enemies don't mean we have to be enemies. None of us can really understand who we are if we forget where we came from. And if we forget who we are, how are we going to get to where we're trying to go? I think taking the Dukes of Hazard off the air was a big step in the wrong direction. None of us chose which part of the country we were going to be born in, who our ancestors were going to be, or what they were going to be famous for. But we all identify ourselves with whichever group we grow up in, and we know that other people do that too. If you tell someone you're from California, Nevada, or Utah, they know that those places are famous for people doing something, and some people at least approve of those things. But what are people from the South famous for? All I ever hear about is slavery, 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 Revolutionary War they only joined because they could keep their slaves, slavery, 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 Civil War, Ku Klux Klan, sharecropping, Jim Crow, segregation, Rosa Parks, bus boycott, civil rights movement, Dr. King, Dr. King's assassination, racism, racism, racism. As a wise man once said, the easiest way to make people feel like they can't do anything is to make them feel like they haven't done anything. Nobody likes hearing people talk as if their ancestors were nothing but garbage for centuries into the past. If you met the man or woman of your dreams and were planning on getting married and having kids, but then you found out that everyone in their family died of cancer by the age of 35, would you still want to have kids with them? So if the only positive thing your ancestors are known for doing is serving their country in a war, even though they lost, that's what you want to remember them for, and that's what you want other people to remember them for. I'm sure that some people today who fly the Confederate flag and say heritage not hate sincerely aren't racists. But if you believe that your ancestors were good and slavery was bad, and you think that proves the Civil War couldn't have had anything to do with slavery, you're not going to impress many people with your understanding of history. Now listen here. A symbol means whatever people think of when they see the symbol. People like the Ku Klux Klan and neo-Nazis have turned the Confederate flag into a symbol of racism. If you want to wave your rebel flag around and you don't want people to think about racism, you got to do something to make them think about what you want them to think about. Otherwise, you look like you're just waving around a symbol of racism. So I'm glad the Dukes of Hazard had the Confederate flag on the roof of the general. I don't know if the producers of the show thought of it like this, but it seems to me that they gave us the chance to rethink our history and what we want to be proud of. If you really want to change cultural values, what you need is for a generation of children to grow up in your country with a new set of ideas. And popular TV shows are a big help in getting people to agree on a new story of who we are. The Dukes were rebels. They fought for what they believed in, and they stood up to the corrupt government of Hazard County. As we all know, the arch villain of the show was named Jefferson Davis Hogg. The real General Lee, on the other hand, didn't believe in slavery or secession. He was from Virginia, 
and like any good soldier, he believed in saving his country. I don't think the producers of the show could have been any more direct with the idea of pitting some parts of Southern history against other parts of Southern history. The Dukes weren't white supremacists or anything of the sort. The Duke family values were American values. The rebels on the Dukes of Hazard fought for the same kinds of things the rebels fought for in the Star Wars movies. The show was about white Southerners who believed in hospitality against white Southerners who believed in greed. The ones who believed in hospitality always won. And I think just about everyone who watched the show was glad of that because that's what we want to happen in real life. So that's what the rebel flag means to me. Unfortunately, other people see it differently. Well, now let me tell you something. The great state of Maine is 95% white, which makes it the whitest state in the country. When I was growing up, it was 97% white. That's really confusing to a lot of people. To some people, that sounds like a great accomplishment. And to a lot of other people, that don't sound good at all. And it's really neither of them things. In the great state of Maine, about 95% of the hardest, most dangerous, low-paying jobs are done by white people. If you walk through the maternity ward of a hospital and you look at all the little newborns lying there, you can't tell just by looking at them which of them have a good chance of growing up to be bank managers and which of them have a good chance of growing up to be farm laborers. The idea behind slavery was that all the worst things in life were going to be assigned permanently to a certain group of people. But as far as I can tell, this whole idea of white superiority just makes white people weak. Because if you depend on someone else to do all the hardest, most dangerous work, they get good at that stuff and you don't. Being a rebel is hard. Jefferson Davis was a rebel, and so was Martin Luther King Jr. And Martin Luther King Jr. used his brain and figured out how to win his struggle, and Jefferson Davis didn't. If you really want to talk about superior and inferior, the idea is that superior people win and inferior people lose. Ain't that how it works? And it's not that Jefferson Davis was unlucky. Slavery wasn't a viable social institution to begin with. There just is no economical way to keep a third of the population of your country under armed guard every minute of the day. Forget about human rights here. The economic logic beyond the North's opposition to slavery was that the only thing that made slavery function in the South was the military support they got from the North to put down the constant slave uprisings. And the only reason the North was able to send that military force to the South was because they didn't need them at home to put down their own slave uprisings because they didn't have slaves in the first place. So what would have happened if the Confederacy had won the war and preserved their tradition of slavery? They either would have had to free the slaves themselves or the whole country would have collapsed on its own. As Malcolm X, another famous rebel, said, if you stick a knife in my back nine inches and pull it out six inches, that's not progress. If you pull it all the way out, that's not progress. Progress is healing the wound. So let me tell you something. The next time you shave your head and load up your guns and pick up your Confederate flag and get ready to go defend the Confederacy and win the Third Battle of Manassas all by yourself, just remember, WW Bald. WW B-A-L-D. What would Bo and Luke do? If Bo and Luke Duke wouldn't do what you're about to do, you don't need to do it either. If you honestly believe that the greatest thing your ancestors ever did was to set up their own country so they could preserve their tradition of slavery and treat people like fam animals when slavery was already bankrupting them economically, I've got three words for you. Your side lost. <laughs>